Hey. Am I back? I wonder, are... Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Our, let's see, our viewers able to hear, maybe have Gretchen be the one to start the call, okay? They said maybe have you be the one to start the call and see I, if that yeah. works better. I don't Should think I, that would do it. No. I don't either. Family to get off. So weird. This has not happened to me in a long time. Yeah, I haven't had this like this. Right. Um, is it better now? I can see you fine. So you're definitely blurry for me. Hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know what's going on. Looks like I have a signal. This is so weird. Can you hear me okay now? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Okay, can everyone else, I know that Gretchen's not coming in clear for me, but can everyone hear Gretchen fine? Okay, so people are saying they can still hear. So we'll okay. just keep, we'll just go and we'll do our best. Okay. Okay. And if it doesn't work, then maybe you'll join me again. All right. Okay. So okay. sorry, you're blurry. I feel so bad. I wish I yeah. could do something. All right. Yeah. I'll give you a quick introduction. Gretchen Rubin, five-time New York Times bestselling author, podcaster, and speaker, creator of the Four Tendencies Framework, Exploring Happiness and Good Habits. She, her podcast, Happier with Gretchen Rubin. She also has a video course and an app called Better, where she talks about insights, strategies, stories, and tips that help people understand themselves better. She lives in New York City with her husband and two daughters, and we're so happy to have you here today. I have so many questions. The first is, how did you decide, I know that you are known as a queen of self-help, and truly you are, but how did that come to be for you? At what point did you really start to have these ideas that you wanted to write an entire book first about happiness and the happiness project? Um, well, actually the happiness project was my fourth book, even though a lot of people don't realize that I was like uh, somebody who was an overnight sensation after 10 years of work. Um, but all my books are really about human nature. That's what really fascinates me is like, why do we do what we do? Why don't we do what we don't do? Um, trying to understand human nature. And so, I got the idea for the happiness project and to start thinking about happiness because um, I was stuck in a, in a crowded bus on a pouring day. And I thought, well, what do I want? For in New school? York, right? Yeah, in New York City. Yeah, yes, I've bus. been on a crowded bus in the pouring rain and yeah. it is miserable. <laughs> yeah, you just jammed in there. I'm like, well, what do I want from life anyway? And I thought, well, I want to be happy. And I realized I didn't spend any time thinking about whether I was happy or if I could be happier. Um, so I ran out to the library the next day, got a giant stack of books and started researching it. At first it was just gonna be for myself, but then I thought, well, this is so interesting. This should be my next book. And then basically I've been writing about that ever since. I see. And so talk about, in your book, I know you talk about different ways to make yourself happy. And every month, is a new idea. Which one has worked best in your own personal life? Well, they all work together and you know, everyone's happiness project would be different. And so, um, but I would say like, if you were gonna say, well, what's the secret to happiness? Um, ancient philosophers and contemporary scientists would say relationships, you know, we need to feel connected to other people. We need to feel like we belong. Um, we all feel this right now with the coronavirus, like we're not connected in the ways that we usually are. So we're searching right. for new ways. So everything that I did, um, another thing that's really important is to live up to your values. This is also something that a lot of people are thinking about right now. We're in a time of great self-reflection and action about putting our values out into the world. And that's something that's really important for happiness too, is to think about, um, what's important to me? What do I believe in? And how do I take action in the world that reflects those values? Yes, really important. 
It, as far as your happiness journey, you also talk about, you know, ways that we can go inward, but how do we, how do we get there? If we're so far from there, we don't even know whether we're happy or not. How do we get there? Well, you know that you're exactly right. And it's kind of funny because you think, well, what would you know? You would know yourself and like you just hang out with yourself all day. But there's sometimes you can ask yourself indirect questions that will shine a spotlight. For instance, you can say, um, what do I lie about? Um, because if you lie about how much exercise you get a day or how much you let your kids watch television or how much you, reading you get done, it means that in some ways your values, your life doesn't reflect your values. And so looking at things where you're not honest can be a big clue that you're sort of letting yourself down. Another really interesting question is, um, whom do you envy? Um, because we often don't want to admit that we envy people because it's a kind of a, it's a negative emotion, but it's actually really helpful because you could think, well, somebody has something that I want. And so what could I do in my own life? Because clearly if I envy somebody because they're always, because they've spent so much time like playing the guitar, it's like, well, maybe you need to figure out how to have more time. Or like, oh, I, this friend of mine, like all she gets all this reading done. It's like, okay, well, maybe you could get more reading done. Um, and here's another question too for people. A lot of adults have kind of lost touch with what they like to do, how to have fun. Yes. Ask yourself, what did you like to do for fun when you were 10 years old? Because probably what you enjoy doing when you were 10, you would enjoy some version of it now. Um, if you liked biking or doing arts and crafts or, um, you know, uh, going for a walk with your dog in the woods or, um, you know, whatever it might be. What is it that you like doing? How do you play? I mean, I have almost no interest. It's, I'm a very narrow person. Um, I like to read and write and that is just about it. And like hang out with my friends and my family. But, um, and that's what I liked to do when I was a kid. One thing I really loved doing when I was a child was I would, um, I had these blank books and I would cut out uh, pictures for magazines and use them to illustrate my favorite quotations. So I would quote, copy out my favorite passages from books that I read and then, and then kind of illustrate them. Um, and I would spend hours like copying and, and like sorting through images and pasting them in. I mean, I have like nine of these still that I, I have in my office with me. And um, oh, but wonderful. Now, you've saved them all these years. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I you. remember each page. Um, but now as an adult, I have this thing called the Moment of Happiness newsletter where I send out like a, a great quotation about happiness or human nature every day. And that is very much a version, a grown up version of exactly the same thing I did as a 10 year old. And I find it fun in exactly the same way, like collect the quotation, copy it out. You know, it's fun for me. And at 10, at 10 years old, did you imagine that you would be influencing so many people and touching so many people with really what you were doing at 10 years old? Not at all. And I'm somebody who really woefully does not, you know, all the, all the experts say, have a five-year plan, have a 10-year plan. I'm like, I'm so bad about right. imagining the future. I did not do that at all. So you, have you always been a person that lives in the moment? Because they say those are the happiest people who don't worry about the past and don't think about the future too much. That is a great question. I don't think I live in the present in that way because I'm very absent-minded. Like, in fact, my next book is gonna be about trying to ground myself in my body and kind of experience the moment more vividly. Um, I think I'm more like an absent-minded type, you know, where I'm just sort of off in my own dreamland. Um, but I, yeah, I don't fuss about the future that much, probably compared to some people. That's an interesting question. Yeah, I'd have to think about that's that. Actually a, that's actually a really good trait though, right? Haven't you learned that in your research that, I mean, I wish I was absent-minded. I wish I didn't think so much because they say, I've heard that kind of being in your head too much is really harmful to yourself and that you kind of can't move yourself forward and you can't explore and just kind of live. Oh no, we're breaking up. Can you see me? Uh, I can see you, but I, it, I didn't hear what you said. 
Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you better now. Okay, good. So I, I'm followed. I think this must be. I mean, it could totally be my end. It's so hard. Um, okay, now it seems like it's completely froze. Frozen. Are you still hearing me just fine? You're fine. I hear you fine. Yes, I hear you fine. That's what's strange. I am not seeing any of this. Okay. So then I would say that maybe it is on your end because mm. I noticed that when I couldn't see any of the glitches, it was my end. It's so weird how that works. Okay. okay. So, so okay I mean, now? that's just from my experience, but okay. it could totally still be my side. Yeah. Anyways, we'll move forward. What about for your girls? What about for your, you know, raising kids, particularly in COVID and trying to help them stay happy and not be disconnected? And as you said, relationships are so important. So how have you guys, you know, been doing anything new during COVID? Well, it is really a struggle. Um, one thing that I realized is that, um, you know, social connections. I have a 15 year old and a 21 year old and they're just so wired to connect socially. And one of the things I realized is that a lot of times they were using that for social connection. So I definitely have taken a much uh, more lenient view of them being on their devices. And, you know, partly that's just, you know, realistic on my part too. Um, but realizing that, that P different people use technology in different ways and they're connecting in different ways, which is really important. Um, right. You know, and, um, you know, we try to have, or I've tried to encourage them to have like little projects where there's like a beginning, a middle and an end. So like one of my daughters loves to do puzzles and that's good because that gives you like a feeling of doing something. Um, right, and accomplishment really loves when it's done. Yeah, my other daughter likes to bake. And it's like, that's something where you feel like, okay, I did that, you know? Um, because it is hard when every day is sort of the same. Um, it's strange though how quickly time goes. Like a month will go by in a flicker. That's um, so true. It's strange, right? Yeah, it, it's hard though, right? Because it's like, we're here and we see them all day. and. For me, it's like, what are you getting done? You're not, you know, you're just on this device all the time. So it was good to hear you say, like, that is their way of social connection right now. And so I definitely need to be more lenient on that. Um, but, you know, on the other hand, it's like, like you said, like, do puzzles, bake, yeah. like, get. Yeah, do lift stuff. up your head. Like, font, yeah, lift up your head. and, and Yeah. Find um, happiness in, you know, you don't necessarily need to always find happiness in that social connection and in other people, because sometimes that just crowds your own headspace and you don't hear yourself, right? Well, and that's a subject that's, a su that's the, um, uh, the subject of a huge amount of research, which is how does social media affect people's happiness? Mm -hmm. And what it seems like is that it's like, it does good things and it does bad things. It's an amplifier of human nature. And so if you're inclined to social comparison, it's like a social comparison machine and that's not good. But then for other people, it's like how many people would feel so much more isolated right now if they weren't able to, maybe it's not as good as being in real life, but having video chat and having tech. Okay, so you froze again. I don't know if other people are noticing that you froze. There. Oh my gosh, that's so much see. better now. Oh good, sometimes that happens. Okay, it's better now. Okay, good. so I missed the last, I missed what you said. Uh, oh, just every medicine can become poison. And so I think social media, there's a lot of wonderful things that it can do for mm -hmm. us. But if it's, we have, if, if it's too much, it can crowd out other things. Like how many people have said to you, I don't do as much reading as I want, because I just scroll, scroll, scroll. And it's like, well, then you need to figure out how to put down your phone so you can pick up a book. Right, right. What are your thoughts on meditation? Thing, these happiness, I feel, I like, I, it does not work for me. So I am one of the people who like, 
I've given it two real tries where I really, really, really tried it. And I have a friend, Dan Harris, who's like, but I just, it doesn't work for me. Yes. 10% happier. Yes. But exactly. you, but say that again, but you what? It just doesn't work for me. It doesn't, it's not useful for me. I don't find it. I don't find any benefit from it. So I have to say like, again, I think it's a great tool That's for really some people. That's really great to hear. Oh, good. So really? It's really great to hear because, you know, I actually think that it does help me. But I think that, you know, it's hard. And I think that sometimes I love hearing that it doesn't work for you and you're an expert in this space. And I think it doesn't for a lot of people. And sometimes I question that too, but it's like, no, it works for everybody. It has to work. It must work. And maybe it just doesn't and that's okay. That's really no, good I to think... know. You know, I really like what one teenager Oh, go ahead. Uh, no, it's just like most, everything it works some for well for some people and not for others. So I think if it's not working, don't beat yourself up, but just say, okay, well, let me try to get, achieve that aim in a different way. Right, exactly. Um, I love that one teenager commented, I'm a teenager and I wish I would get off my device more, but I'm not very proactive about it. It's really interesting when you hear from teens, you know, that they, just that, that they realize they're on it too much and they realize that it takes them down a hole and it's too much, but you know, it's hard to break away just like it is for adults. And well, here's a great tip. If you want to use your phone less, put your phone to grayscale, which is when it's in black, white, and gray, instead of being in color. And it is much less fun to use. It's much harder on your eyes. It just is not nearly as enticing. And so if you want to be able to use the functions of your phone, but you just want to make it less appealing, that right. is a super, you just do that in settings. It takes one second. And then you can always just switch back. Um, but it's like, it really- That is really difference. good to know. Great tip. So go to it's, settings and put your phone in grayscale. It's also a good tip if you have a little kid, because you can just say like, oh, the phone's not working. It's not, you know, you're like, oh, I'm sorry. It's like something's not working right. And then they're like, what? Because they won't want to use it very much if it's black, white, and gray either. So it's kind of like, you know, um, kind of a dodge you can use if you have a little kid who's like trying to grab your iPad out of your hand the whole time. It's a great tip. Yes, I think lots of kids are on. <laughs> The younger too, younger and younger and younger. It's astounding, but it's it's hard. It's hard to be a parent today for sure. Yeah. Um, okay, so you have had a lot of amazing experiences. You've been interviewed by Oprah. You have walked with the Dalai Lama. You have had a question on Jeopardy. You've a, a million more things. What has been sort of your most exciting moment, the most happiest, surprising thing that you have done with all of these books and through all of your authenticity? Well, that is such a great question. I mean, talking to Oprah was kind of an out of the body experience and it, they were very gracious. My sister, so uh, she filmed it at her house in Montecito and my sister lives in Los Angeles. And so I said, can I bring my sister with me? And they were like, yeah, usually you can't bring like a whole team, but if it's just like your sister driving you down, like that's okay. So my sister was there. So it was this whole sister. How lucky, I wish I was your sister. I know, it was so fun. And, um, but so my sister came with me and we're there, of course, it's like so exciting. And then she watches the whole interview, like from like, you know, the, like where the cameras are, because I'm talking to Oprah. And then in the car on the way home, I'm like, I don't remember anything. I don't remember anything. It's like my short term memory just shut up. And she's like, well, you talked about this. You talked about that. You talked about that. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember that. I remember that. But it was like, it was so overwhelming at the time that I was like, what just happened? I remember there was a fly at one point flying by. I'm like, I remember the fly, but I don't remember anything we talked about. Because it was just like, I think my mind was so focused on like what is happening that like there was no bandwidth left to kind of like do the do the backup copy. But fortunately, my sister right, she remembered right. it and she prompted me and then I'm like, okay, I've got it. I got it. But um, it was just funny um, because uh, it was like I've never had my, my memory just kind of like shut down like that, like the, that, that day, you know. <laughs> right, right. 
it's like your brain and every fiber in you took all yeah. the energy and it was yes. just so exciting and the adrenaline rush. Yeah. Wow, yeah. I can't even yeah. imagine. And yeah. it was at her house. So that yeah. on top of yeah. everything, right? Yeah, no, which was very It was cool. like a glimpse into her world. Yeah, it was. It was really cool. Yeah. Um, so that was definitely a highlight. And it was so, it was so wonderful that my, I'm super close to my sister. She's the co-host of the Happier with Gretchen Rubin podcast with me. So, so instead of being, I think I would have been like nervous and kind of like, but this made it kind of this adventure. And like, we stayed in a nice hotel the night before. And, oh. you know, she was just so comforting. To, she's like my teddy bear. You know, I felt so comforted just to have her oh, there. Of course. Um, so that really- I'm sure it. that was an amazing experience for your sister too. But, but you know what we did is, um, so we're leaving the next day to go back to Los Angeles and we drive back. She, we both hate to drive. And so she's driving in, in California traffic. And we get there, we get to her house and just as we're pulling up to her house, I'm like, I never got my suitcase from the hotel. Oh <laughs> Fuss with getting the, the uh, get the suitcase. But anyway, she was a very good sport, a very good, good sister to me through the whole adventure. Oh my goodness, that is a time you will never forget. And so special that you had that experience with your sister. Oh my gosh. So at the end of it, I mean, I know you didn't remember much, but when you watched it back, was it, you know, was it just as you had hoped it would be? Was there anything where you like, oh my gosh, I like completely forgot to add in like, you know, these points or how yeah. did you feel about the interview? Well, you know, almost always when you, when you, and I'm sure you feel the same way, like later on, you're like, oh, that would have been such a good thing. I wish I'd thought of that or, yeah, you know, yeah. so I think you always have that feeling. But I remember beforehand, I had a couple of friends who had, had 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 been interviewed by Oprah. So I called them for advice and one of them gave me the best advice. And they're like, she's the best in the world. She's incredibly well prepared. Just listen to her and respond to her. Don't try to direct the conversation. Like, don't overthink it. Just like, like you were saying, stay in the moment and just have the conversation because you don't, because sometimes when people are interviewing you, like they, you kind of have to drive the bus for them because they don't, mm -hmm. they're like, they're, they don't really understand your work or they're going in a direction that's like, you don't think it's that interesting, whatever. They're like, no, just let her do her thing and you just listen right. and respond. And that was great advice because um, it just kept me very focused on like, what are we talking about? And uh, right. And so I didn't then later on feel like, oh, I wish I had tried to insert this like clever right. anecdote about X, Y, Z. Because I'm like, look, it's Oprah. She, she's like, she'll, it'll be good. <laughs> she'll right. make it good. So the pressure's off me a little bit. Yeah. Right. Was there one thing you walked away? Like, was there something you learned about her from being in her mm. home, being with her? Something you learned that we would all well, want to hear about. Well, this was interesting because one of the things that I mentioned was that like everyone's happiness project is different and that for some people, music is a really important part of it. And like maybe it's listening to new music or music or going to live concerts or like starting a band or, um, you know, getting back into practicing or, you know, learning new music or a new instrument. And I was saying, that's just not me. Like, I just, I like a song here and there, but I'm just not somebody who's very interested in music. And which I feel like is sad because I know how much pleasure people get out of music. Um, but for me, it's just not that important. And she was like, later afterwards, she's like, that's just like me. She's like, Gail King, like, she loves music. She can remember every lyric. Like, and she's like, you know, and some people are, are more into it than others. And I was like, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that is very interesting because I will say I love music and music really does light me up so much. Like when I'm doing my makeup, I, I love Alexa. By the way, I think Alexa is like God's gift to earth. <laughs> and I just, I have an Alexa like everywhere I go. And now when I go to hotels, I bring Alexa. <laughs> oh, wow. 
<laughs> because I'm constantly like, Alexa, turn on the music. Alexa, play this music. And I feel like with Alexa, I can just constantly hear music and the exact songs I want. And it's so funny. I just said Alexa. And so Alexa is talking. Oh, great. Oh, of course. I know that's the danger. But you know, <laughs> what research shows, though, is that listening to one of your favorite upbeat songs is one of the quickest and most effective ways to change your mood. And so you're really smart to tap into that because that is a great like whenever you need a little bit of a lift or like this is why gyms are constantly playing music is it gives us that energy. And so it yes. really is, it really can play a very useful role in a happy life. Gretchen, I am so excited to have been with you this morning. I do have one more quick question though. Can you tell us a little bit more about your podcast that you do with your sister? Oh. I, I'm not a huge podcaster, but I know a lot of people are. And so tell us more about the podcast. Yeah, it's called Happier with Gretchen Rubin, and it's a weekly podcast. And as I said, my sister is my co-host, and she's a TV writer and, and showrunner who lives in Los Angeles. We're both from Kansas City. And so every week we talk about sort of strategies and solutions and hacks for how to be happier, healthier, more productive, and more creative. So we talk about kind of like the new research and like ancient philosophy and also a lot of things from our own fun um, and it's wherever you listen to your podcast if you're interested in checking it out definitely interested in your podcast sounds great um, and then you have the app better I, I mean it's like I have to learn yeah. about all these things that you have going on that can help make all of our lives better what tell us really quick about the app it's a very simple free app and it's a place where if people want to talk about happiness or good habits or the four tendencies, you mentioned that I have a book called The Four Tendencies, which is a personality framework that divides people into upholders, questioners, obligers, and rebels. And if people want to know what they are, they can take the quiz at quiz.gretchenrubin.com. It's like a free quick quiz, but it's a lot of people when they find out their tendency, they're like, oh my gosh, all they want to do is like learn more about it and connect with other people of their tendency. And so the better app is a place that makes it very easy to do that. So there's, there's just like a lot of resources there for how to be happier. And that's so just on a the app. app. So on the app, you can connect with others who have yes. your same tendency. Yeah. That's or like, let's say cool. you, you have a rebel child and you have a parenting issue. Um, and so you're like, what do other what do what what have other parents of rebel children done to try to work with the rebel tendency to to on this certain kind of uh navigate it. yeah yeah yes that is great we all need help we all need help we can we all learn for ourselves or with our kids you have so many great resources so much that you're doing to make the world a better place and to help us all be happier thank you so much Thank you for having me. It was so fun to talk to you. And sorry about the tech issues. No, no problem. We'll have to do it again. Thank you. Take care. Bye -bye. Thank Bye -bye. you, everyone, for watching. Bye.